the Mod Institute top tip here. Guys, I'm bringing you one of my most favorite topics in the world, which is digital dentures. Um, this is my definitely one of my favorite things to teach, and I want to give you a tip that's really going to help you drive these home. Whether you're a lab technician or a dentist and you're trying to figure this out, number one is how do you even begin to determine your borders for a denture when they're from a truly mucostatic intraoral scan? And you know what? You have to know your anatomy, guys. You have to understand your muscle attachments, your fibers, your vasculature. You're looking for things like capillary beds. You're looking for pleated muscle folds as they attach to the mucogingival junction from the buccinator muscle. Um, you're looking at things like the pterygomandibular raphe, the pteromaxillary notch, the insertion of the temporalis. Um, the vibrating line, um, you're, you're looking for your fovea palatini, you're looking for everything and you need to understand what these features are. So I'm going to go through it with you. This is so critical and definitely what distinguishes a kind of a, a dentist who's knowledgeable on the topic from a dentist who's not, not knowledgeable on the topic. So let's all grow together. Number one, if you are going to attempt to scan these intraorally, you need to understand the scan pattern and how to do this correctly. Um, here at the Mod Institute, we use um, PrimeScan, Medet, and Trios. Um, we also have a bunch of other scanners that we were testing and using. And, and with any scanner, it really doesn't matter. What's key is how you scan. And so what I like to do is get all my attached tissues first and trim any accidental scan of any movable tissues away. Then I very carefully get my retractors and we use um, special retractors designed for soft tissues here and we get that in one swoop, hamular notch to midline, hamular notch to midline. And the key is getting those tissues under tension so that you can see the muscle pleats um, when you're marking your borders and also getting them in one smooth motion. And we train teams how to do this at the Mod Institute. It's what we're known for. I'd love to see you guys come to one of our denture courses and um, look for that in the future. We have a lot of fun stuff to talk about at our hands-on courses. But for now, let's just discuss muscles and anatomical features on the intraoral scan that you need to capture when you're doing these. Um, first and foremost, foremost, you need to at least get back to the vibrating line. Um, the vibrating line is kind of where the soft palate and meets the aponeurosi of the tensor vili palatini. Um, and it's kind of easy to distinguish, I think, on an intraoral scan. And there are um, classes of soft palates from class one, two, and three, depending on the severity of the angulation of the palatal vault. Um, this particular patient is a class two palate. And sometimes, depending on the age of the patient, the fovea palatini are either at the vibrating line, posterior or distal to the vibrating line, and sometimes uh, even potentially anterior to the vibrating line. So it's not such a really good thing to determine the exact location of the vibrating line. However, they are always about one to one point three millimeters away from the vibrating line. So even if you did nothing else, you could just put your line on the fovea and be super close to having the posterior border of your denture. Now, once we get away from the vibrating line and the fovea palatini, we are gonna go ahead and get to our pterygomandibular raffe. The pterygomandibular raffe is kind of a tendinous bundle that connects the buccinator to the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscles. And when you're doing your intraoral scans, because you don't have a physical impression material pushing that out of the way, you could oftentimes see this bulbous notch um, distal to the pterygomandibular notch, this bulbous kind of bundle right there. And we know when we do our digital designs that we could put pressure back there into that kind of triangular fossa back there. Uh, which really, you know, is the fissure between the tuberosity of the maxilla and the hamulus of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. And, and that's where we could kind of get a lot of retention for our denture on the maxilla. Then we have our uh, temporalis tendon. Um, the temporalis tendon does not actually attach to the maxilla. It attaches to the coronoid process of the mandible. But oftentimes those bundles, depending on the patient, can be quite pronounced right here in this corner. Combine that with the buccal fat pad, and this is oftentimes a difficult area to scan, which is where 
retractors come into play back here for this temporalis tendon area. Then we, of course, have our coronary process. Sometimes it's beneficial to have the patient just ever so slightly closed so that opens up that coronary process area into that fossa um, back there. Then we have, of course, our buccinator muscle and the attachment at the mucogingival junction and all the way along the molar, premolar area of our vestibule. And then we kind of terminate anteriorly into the buccal frenum, which is usually located at the premolar area. And this is usually going to be something you want to scan under tension so that you can see the actual muscle pleats as it attaches um, to the maxilla. Then we have kind of our anterior segment here. Um, kind of uh, most tight is the levator anguli oris. This muscle is a tight little bundle of muscle fibers that um, really need to be captured. They perform the most anterior segment of the, the buccal fold there on the facial segment of the maxilla. And then we have our big orbicularis oris muscle which is going to be stretched well out of the way when you have retractors. And then in the most anterior region, we have our incisivus labii superioris and our depressor septi nasi, which um, kind of constricts the nares and raises up the lip as it attaches to the orbicularis oris as well. And so these, these muscles and components all comprise the, the anatomy that we look for when we go to mark our border. And so here we are in now AXOCAD, and we're looking at this thing. And first of all, we can look at capillaries on those soft tissue borders up there in the anterior segment, especially we could see our petechiae, our fovea palatini, our mid palatal raphae, our incisive papilla. And what AXOCAD does is it puts kind of this baby blue block out model on top of the intraoral scan. This is kind of our spacer and our undercut block out. And I always start in the hamular notch um, area. That's the pterygo mandibular notch or pterygo maxillary notch, I should say. And I go just anterior to the fovea palatini, usually about a millimeter away. And now I'm actually looking for these folds. If you look really closely, you guys could actually see these tiny little folds where the buccinator muscle attaches to the uh, maxillary ridge here. See them right up there? These, these little tiny little pleats, micro pleats all the way around. And if you get lost, you could always turn off your model, your baby blue model, and go back onto your true color intraoral scan and you look for that highly vascular structure and all the way back around. I mean, people just overthink the bejeepers out of this. This is way better than a border molded impression in my mind because you've captured everything at a mucostatic position. Your suction is going to be way better if you know what you're doing. The reason why we border mold is because we are trying to accommodate for physical impression material, which pushes, distorts, and squeezes the tissues. When you're crafting this jaw by light, we do not have that problem. We could scan these tissues like this, look at the color, look at the vasculature, look at where our muscles are, and we could fabricate a phenomenal high suction prosthesis for the patient, both in the mandible and maxilla. Mandible is definitely more difficult to do with intraoral scans, but guys, come hang out with me at the Mod Institute. Let's learn this together. Let's do this. Um, let's design these things. Let's teach you how to do selective pressure suction dentures. Um, this is what it's all about. I hope this helps you understand, and I cannot wait to see you back at MOD. Thanks, guys.